This video is just one in a series about Adobe Express. And in this particular video, we're going to look at how to use Adobe Express to create an AI image and then to use generative fill to add additional content to that image. Let's get started. So here I am in my free Adobe Express account. And I'm just going to browse down the home page and look for text to image. I'll click here and describe what I would like Adobe Express to create. I would like a flying horse with airplane wings flying through the sky with a beautiful landscape in the background. I will go ahead and click Generate, and Adobe Express is now working to use artificial intelligence to compose and create the image that I've just described. I think that's a pretty good result. But I can click over here on a second image if I would prefer something else. I can click on this image and this one. If I want even more to choose from, I can click Load More, and Express is working to generate even more to choose from. Okay, I think this is the closest to what I wanted. Unfortunately though, this AI-generated image has some strange elements that I would like to change. For example, we have too many legs, and we've got this thing over here. I don't understand what that is. So I'm going to try Generative Fill to add additional content to this image, and perhaps remove some of the things I don't want in this image. So I'll click Try Generative Fill, and now my mouse pointer turns into a brush, basically. And here at the left, I can change the brush size if I want it to be bigger or smaller so that I can more easily reach the parts of the image that I want to remove or change. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight that extra leg that I don't really want to have in this image. I'll release the mouse button. It looks like I didn't quite get the whole thing, so I'll try again and add another little bit to the selected area. Now here at the left, it says, make whatever you imagine, describe what you'd like to see. And I'm gonna write, remove the leg. I'll tap generate or click generate. And it looks like Adobe Express didn't like the idea of removing the leg. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna click and drag to highlight that extra leg. Instead of saying remove the leg, I'm just gonna type remove click Generate, and Adobe Express did much better with that command. It didn't quite get the entire leg, so I'm gonna select a little more, click to type Remove. Let's see how this works. Okay, to me, that looks great. I still get multiple options, so I can click to see those other options and what they look like. I like the first option the best. Now, here at the left, I can browse up to the top of the panel again, and I could choose to now work on these strange objects that are here at the left. I'm going to change the brush size, making it bigger, and I'll just click and drag to highlight what I want to change, and then I'll describe what I want to see. I would like to see a hot air balloon. I click Generate. Let's see if it can handle this. We're going to try to turn that strange object into a hot air balloon. Okay, it worked, but it actually gave me more than one hot air balloon, you know what, that's okay. I think it still looks great, and maybe even better than what I had asked for. And I can click through to see which of these generated images I like best. I think it's this one here. I could load more if I want to, but when I'm satisfied and I'm done, I can just click Done. And at this point, I could just download the image, or if I really want to, I could remove the background completely. I could do another generative fill if I want to. I could also add some text to my image if I would like. I'll just click on Meet the Team, and then if I wanted to, I could click and drag to move that text, and I could double click on it to change the text to fit the image. I'm gonna hold Control and tap Z to undo that because I'm happy with the way the image is right now. So now that my image is done, all I have to do is click Download. I can choose the type of download I would like for this image. Maybe I want it to be a JPEG or a PDF. In most cases, I think you'll want a PNG. Just click Download, and the image is downloaded to your computer. Now you may notice I forgot to rename the image. So here in the upper left, I should have clicked on Untitled, and then named it whatever I want to name the image. Now when I click Download, and choose the type of download, click Download again, it downloads my image with its correct name. And I can click on that if I want to, to open up the full image of what I've created and downloaded to my computer. Now that I have this image, I can use it in a presentation, I could post it to a learning management system, or to a web page, or social media. I also have the ability to share this image digitally. I can click on Share, invite specific people to work on this document with me or look at the document. I could also choose to simply publish this image to the web 
If I do this, it will make it a completely public image that people will be able to see by clicking a link. They'll be taken to a web page on which this image will be embedded. I'm going to click this plus sign to get a new tab. I'll paste in the link. And here is my published image that I used Adobe Express AI to create. Now, one of the best things about AI images in Adobe Express is all of the imagery that's created is based on images that Adobe licensed. They have a massive library of licensed images, including photos and graphics, and the artificial intelligence is looking at their library and then composing images based on the styles and artwork and photography in Adobe's licensed library. So that's a huge advantage over most of the other AI image generators. So I hope you'll try Adobe Express and specifically the AI image generator and the generative fill tool to remove or add additional elements into your images. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll go on to watch my other Adobe Express videos. But for now, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to join me as a channel member. You could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say thank you to my fantastic Super Techie channel supporters. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate you.